Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. I believe that this is the name that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are just glad to be alive? Another seven days, God has kept us. He has protected us. He has watched over us. He has provided us. And we've got no better sense than to come into his presence and give the Lord a mighty praise. I'm going to invite Reverend Marsh to come and lead us in our prayer. Uh, first prayer of the morning. This is our prayer of invocation. We are inviting the presence, the spirit of God to be in our service today. We need him to go row by row and pew by pew and meet us today at our honor of need. As she prays, you pray that God would manifest, that he would bless, not only here in the sanctuary, but everyone who's watching virtually. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, the word says there is liberty. And we can be free in the presence of God to give him praise. Minister. Verse 33. 
four. Let's read together in one unified voice. Let's begin. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Thank you. 
wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. God has been good to us. God has been kind to us. God has kept us. God has brought us from a mighty long way. I don't know about you, but it's always good to be in the house of God one more time. I heard the old deacon say it's a place where his honor dwell. Amen. Our God does not dwell in brick and mortar. He lives in us. But he has created this place 
that the believers can come together. And we come to worship him for who he is. We come to praise him for the things that he has done. We've come to fellowship one with the other. Your praise meets up with my praise. And we just glorify the name of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. As we continue in worship, we want to give you a few announcements and then we'll move forward uh, in our worship experience. Uh, this month, Pastor Bubbles will be on vacation and we want to keep him in prayer. We pray that God will refresh him and revive him. He and Lady Sherry will be doing some traveling. Actually, on this morning, uh, they are in Delaware. Pastor had been invited to preach and so he'll be preaching uh, this morning, probably up at this present time, we want to pray that God would use him as he always does. And I believe they're going to go down and see uh, Nate and Tia, uh, there's, I'm sorry, Nate and his wife, Tuary, uh, in Atlanta, and then do whatever else they do. And we just pray. They didn't ask me to go, because surely, <laughs> surely I would have went. But uh, we pray, God, that they would just have a good time. We thank you, the people of God. Please remember our notices on this Tuesday night, no Bible study. However, we will have our corporate prayer at 7.30. The information is on our website. The Thursday night Bible stu study does continue. That's at 7.30 on Zoom. All of the access information is on the website, www.rcministries.org. So please join in with us uh, in prayer and be available for Bible study on Thursday. At this time, I want to give you an opportunity to bring your tithes and your offerings and your gifts of love for the support of the ministry. The baskets will be passed here in the sanctuary. Those of you who are giving online, continue to do so. You can go to our website, uh, click the Give button. It'll take you right there. There's Givelify. We have text to give. There's so many ways to give. And always remember, it's because of your faithful support that we can continue to do ministry. Amen. Church is a little different these days. Is that right? Amen. But we are still the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. We need your support. Let's pray now over these gifts of love. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity to bring our tithes and our offerings and our gifts of love for the support of the ministry. We ask, oh God, that whatever we give, whether it be little or much, that it will be used to the upbuilding of thy kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. On well, this week, we learned of the passing of uh, Kim Craig. This is the daughter of Yvonne Craig. She will be funeralized this Wednesday here at the church. There is a viewing from 930 to 11, 930 to 11. I'm going to ask as many of you who can. Uh, the scripture tells us we mourn with those who mourn. We know that some folks have to go to work, but there are a number of our uh, members who are retired. Please come. Let's show the family some love, be in prayer, and support with them. Also, we announced that on last week, Travis Wadi, a former member, had passed away. And his service is going to be on this Thursday. That information has been taxed out. It's at another church, the Way of Deliverance. Those who knew him, if you're available, it is a memorial service. Please go by and be a part of that uh, situation um, to share with that family and to encourage them. Amen. Amen. That's going to conclude our announcements for today. Our praise team is going to come and give us a song of preparation. And then we will come with the word of God.
not natural that makes sense to my mind but to praise God when I'm sick and to praise God when I'm broke and to praise God when I'm lonely and to praise God in difficult situations that's the wrong folks you have walked with God a while and you have a relationship with God. Somebody said you have a testimony and you don't get a testimony without being tested. So you got to go through something. You got to go through something in order to get a testimony. And I thank God in my 60 years, Beverly, I've been through a thing or two where God has shown up. Yeah. This morning my Bible is open to a familiar passage. It is Romans chapter 8. And we want to shine the sermonic spotlight on this one particular verse. It's amazing. It's an amazing verse. So Father in heaven, thank you for this time that we will look into your word these few minutes, God. Speak to us that allow us to apply it to our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Paul, the great apostle, is the writer of this book. And he says words that you've heard down through the years. This text says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. I just want to preach maybe 10 or 15 minutes from the thought, no condemnation. No condemnation. Amen. I need to make sure I'm in the right church. Is anybody in church ever sinned? Right. Just by a show of hands, would you help a brother out? Have you sinned? I, I, I think there's a verse in that book that says all. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people like to say y'all have sinned, but it says all have sinned. Okay, uh, conversely on the other side, is there anybody in church or those of you watching by Facebook that have never sinned? Are you in that club? Okay, I'm in the right church because I have sinned. I have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says I was born in sin. And shaped in iniquity. So it's easy to say, well, I was a sinner, but how many of you have sinned since? <sighs> since you can say, I have fallen short, I have missed the mark, I have disappointed God, I have even disappointed my friends. I have disappointed family. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But here, Paul lifts up a word that's interesting. Paul says, there is therefore, and whenever there is therefore, there would be a before. So, but there is therefore when? Now. now no condemnation. Understand that condemnation, the biblical definition for condemnation is death. I'm going to prove it to you. Condemnation is death, but there's no death to us who are in who? And what is it? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Every person that is born again is born of the spirit of God. You have been changed at the moment of conversion. You are born. And when you are born, you are a babe in Christ. Then the scripture says you should desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. 
Huh? So my grandson Avery back there, God, uh, uh, he is covered under the grace of God because he has not reached the age of accountability. Y'all hear me? Amen. Right? But God expects more out of me than he does out of Avery. Why? Because Avery is a child. So when you are born into the family of God, you come in as a baby. You don't know anything. So God extends a level of grace to children and to babies because you don't have knowledge. But those of us who have grown up and had a time to study his word, there's a greater level of accountability because when you know right, you ought to do right. When you know better, you ought to do better. I wonder, do you hear me? Paul says there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, which lets me know that it's possible to be in Christ Jesus and walk after your flesh. It's called carnality. That's in your Bible. You are saved, but you are living your life through your flesh. You are carnal. You belong to God, but you are carnal. When you are led by the Spirit, that means you are controlled by the Spirit. I hear Paul says to the Ephesians, be not drunk with wine where it is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. The feeling is not just your dance. It's not just your emotions. Uh, salvation can be emotional, but God wants us to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Yeah. I want to take you to another verse of scripture, Brother Pete. Go down the slide. This is a scripture that we know of. I just want to prove some stuff. We're going to get up on out of here. Is that all right? Amen. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Listen to this. For God so loved the world. This is Sunday school. Sister Jones taught us this. In the basement of the church, the first verse we learn, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, watch this, everlasting life. Huh? When you, when God so loved us so much, he gave us the greatest gift of all his son. And if you accept it by faith, that's what believing is, you have eternal life. You will not die, watch this, that's spiritual death, right, which is eternal separation from God, because we know people die every day, right? But you will have eternal life. Let me help somebody. Abundant life is not things. People think it is, but it is not things. Abundant life is life in Christ. The moment you accept Christ, you gain eternal life. I love 17. This is the purpose. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world. Watch this. That's the root word of condemnation. God did not send his son into the world so that he would kill people and send them all to hell. That wasn't the plan. The plan is that the world through him might be saved. Saved from what, Andy? God is coming back to cleanse and purify this world from sin. And salvation means that we'll be saved from the destruction that is to come. Don't fool yourself. Everybody's not going to heaven. You must be, John says, you must be. You must be born again. So God, verse 17, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Next verse, please. Watch this. It's going to be like a new revelation if you haven't heard it this way. He that believeth is not condemned. Everybody who has expressed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ you are not condemned. There is not condemnation hanging over you. You are not going to hell. But guess who is going? The scripture says, but he that believeth not is condemned already. 
Why, preacher? Because he has not believed. He has not believed. had trusting faith in Jesus Christ. He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's why folks are going to hell. Huh? The things that we do in life manifest the people that we are. Huh? Sinners sin. That therefore they are sinners. Believers sin. But the scripture says we cannot practice sin. I hear the same writer in Romans says, can we continue in sin? What's the answer? God forbid. God forbid. So watch this. Let, let this help you this morning. We are not under condemnation. However, the believer is under conviction. Yes. Not condemnation. Hear me. Conviction. No, Reverend, that's my guilt. No, it's not guilt. Conviction means that you know what the truth is and your spirit is troubled because you know what you ought to be doing. That is the conviction of God. Everybody in this room has sinned, has had the conviction of God, I've got to do better. God, i got to get my life together. I got, the game was changed. And, 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 and sorry, if this, uh, uh, if this has been sold, this bag of I don't know what it is that's been sold to you, but every time you leave church, you can't leave all on a high all the time. Right. You can't come to church and shout all the time. Right. You can't be laid out on the floor all the time, screaming Jesus, hallelujah. Sometimes, right. sometimes, right. the conviction of God should be on us where we're like, God, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> I messed up again, yeah. but I need you to help me. Yeah. And we find ourselves on our knees at that cross where the blood never runs dry and we were singing about that blood that will never lose its power it's the blood that washes us it's the blood that cleanses us it's the blood that keeps us sometimes when you come to church you ought to be challenged Amen. I'm Reverend I'm not, I ain't walking right it ain't about nobody else in the building it's between you and God that's the conviction Huh? See, the unbeliever feels guilt. But that's not where God wants you. God wants us to be free in Him. God doesn't want you to come to Him and then He binds you up with your whole past. I, I, I hear another verse that says, forgetting those things, huh? Which are behind. I press towards the high mark. The calling of Christ Jesus is oppressed. The Christian life is oppressed. I'm, always, I'm trying to do better. Uh, I'm in the Bible. There's a scripture that says, Paul says uh, 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 in Romans uh, uh, 7 18, for I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Right? Uh, for, for to will is present, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul is the super saint. He wrote 14 books of the Bible. If, if, of the Bible, if anybody could do it, Paul should be able to do it. Huh? But we all have fallen short. At the top of your game, we come on communion Sunday. Uh, and the scripture talks about he that, in, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. Huh? Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. I submit to you that the damnation is for those who are unbelievers. See, none of us are worthy. Amen. None of us. Amen. Are, you're at the top of your game. You're quoting 800 scriptures. You are not worthy. Oh and there's no super saint in here. There's nobody walking under the anointing all the time. Right. Huh? Amen. On a good day, Aunt Sissy, if somebody bothers you, you, if you don't say it, you'll think it. <laughs> there's a president guy I know. You may not say it, but I think it. Come on, Doc. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people in our family, straight up. I love them. But I don't necessarily like them all the time. Huh? 
You know, people still get on your nerves. Right? <laughs> on Women's Day, Pastor Don Harvey was here. And that sister said something that stuck with me. She said, and, and see, all of us in here, we admit it, we already say it. But she said something. And, and what she said, and this is a paraphrase on it, she said, well, we've been saved all this time. And you still mad. That's what she said. Are you still mad? Are you still angry? Are you, you've been saved for 40 years. Are you still carrying grudges? It is absolutely ungodly. Huh? When he sets us free, we shouldn't be in bondage. Think about it. Think about it. You think about it. You've been saved. Who's been saved more than 50 years? 50. Oh, uh, you can say more than 50. Okay, more than 50 years. Even, and you still mad. And Jesus is the joy of your salvation. And you still mad. You still upset. You still hating on folks. You didn't say too long for that nonsense. The Bible says grow up. You got to loose it and let it go. The only person you're hurting is yourself. And many times the things that we keep people, look, I'm not talking about being a walking board. There's some people you need to put a mark on. Huh? Some believers. There's some sinners. You need to put a mark on them. Person can't tell the truth. I'm going to put a mark on you. I love you, but I, I can't trust what you say. Huh? Hurt me once. But you ain't going to hurt me twice. I got my guard up. I'm watching you. I'm not, I'm not being ungodly. I'm just saying, you got an issue. You and the Lord got to work it out. All I can do is pray for you. <laughs> no condemnation. No condemnation. If you leave here today, you ought to be challenged. Not under a load of guilt. I hear the hymn writer say, uh, he touched me. Huh? The verse says something about neath a load of guilt and shame. See, God doesn't want us walking in shame. He wants us living in victory. You mess up, the Bible says, oh, do we mess up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John says what? If we say, this is our first John, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So all I got to do is what? The next verse. But if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. One version says, purify us from all, all unrighteousness. So don't be upset. You can be upset with yourself, but you're not living under guilt and shame because we have a remedy. But you feel bad because you stay in that side and won't confess. Most parents, those of us in the room and we have our children, most parents, all we want you to do is realize what you've done. That's all it is. We're not trying to kill you. We're not trying to hurt you. We're trying to get you to realize. Do you know God is the same way? He already knows what you've done. Right? He wants to love you. The prodigal son, he saw him afar off. The scripture says he ran to him. God is coming to us. He wants to restore us. Huh? Don't stay away from God because of guilt and shame. Now, sometimes the circumstance, help me, Holy Ghost, help me. The, the scripture says that the son came to himself. Uh, he had an epiphany. He made a turn. I'm wrong. Time to go home. And we need to be telling our loved ones. Y'all can come home. Y'all can come home. We got some loved ones living some wild stuff, been through some things, but they need to know they can come home. Amen. Huh? Amen. They need to know that they, they and they, but they have to do it. They have to realize it for themselves. I had a sister that got addicted on drugs years ago. I cannot say for a certainty that she's still using me. I love you. I hope you're watching. But you need to know. 
that the door of forgiveness yeah. is still open yeah. Yeah. together. Yeah. But how can I, I heard somebody say to me not too long ago, I don't know how to forgive. I just, the only motivation you know is if you don't forgive, God's going to hold the thing against you. The only motivation is that because he forgave you, because he, Lord have mercy, we've been in some corners, Keisha. We've been in some dive. Don't get fooled by these people's clothes. They've been places. They've done stuff. They've done the Jerry Springer stuff. You know what I'm saying? Adultery, fornication, all of the nasty stuff. Yeah, yeah, people in church have done it. But the same grace, the same mercy that God extended towards us, He can extend to somebody else. People be messed up in life. Huh? It's not how you started, it's how you finish. Everybody in church has a past. I say it all the time, Facebook. Everybody up in here got something. Even now, I really rather that you all did not know. And you got yours. Huh? You don't want me to know what you did. Because you think, see, that, that's of the enemy. You think that I would think less of you. Now nah, I've been through the ring. I can't think of less, less of you because the scripture says if we judge ourselves, and I have learned the way he's judging me has become a full-time job. I stay on my knees. God, I, I've been preaching your word 30 years. I still need grace. I still need mercy. I still jack up from time to time. Everything that I think doesn't always honor God. He says, if I confess. And, and, and look, make up your mind. He thinks you're going to believe me on your night. Why come this way every Sunday? Why drive from down the country? <laughs> huh? Why do? Why give your money? You can play the lottery and win all that money. Huh? Why give your money? Why come here but let the preacher fuss you out? Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. Any time you live outside of the will of God, you are not free. You feel free, particularly when you're with your friends. But you're not free. You're not free. When you by yourself, you're not free. If you are a believer, you certainly cannot be free. You are under the conviction. You are under the conviction of God. And you'll never have peace until you get right. I hear the saints say, get right with God. And do it now. Get right with God. And He will He'll show you how. Down. Down at the cross. Where what? Where, Where He shed His blood. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. I had an old man with a third grade education say, We're calling people. Back to the Bible. Nothing has changed. They're going to have to, and if they're coming through the Christ, they're going to come at the cross. Huh? All of us. The cross is the great equalizer. That's what our forgiveness is, and that's why we love the blood. Because the blood will wash us. It will purify us. So I stopped by 56th Street this morning to tell you no condemnation. Have you jacked up in your life? <laughs> God, join the club. You looking for a perfect church? Tell me when you find it. Yeah. I'm going to come join it. Huh? One scholar said we are sinners saved by grace. It's the mercy of God. And it's because of his mercy that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness. He should, uh, because of our sins, he should have thrown us away a long time ago, but he doesn't do that because of his love for us and his mercy. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, 
but after the Spirit. Reverend Brooks, I like to walk closer with God. Well, if you come down front, we're going to sprinkle some magic dust on you. <laughs> Let me know how that works out for you. There's nothing magical about it. It's study his word. Amen. Know his word. Yeah. Rely on his word. Yeah. The scripture says, don't just be a hearer. You got to be a doer. Right. You got to be a doer. Will you mess up time to time? Probably so. But when you do, it's not condemnation. It's conviction telling you to do better. Right. To get it right. To get in line. Right. Huh? You hear the, I, I haven't been in the military, but I can hear the drill sergeant say, get in line, soldier. Never once they say, you're not a soldier. It just said, get in line. Huh? Play your position. Whatever your assignment is in the body of Christ, do it and do it well. Give your all to God. Watch this. And we're going to be finished. Serving God is going to cost you. It cost Jesus his life. Huh? It's going to cost you. That means you have to sacrifice. That means coming to this place sometimes when you don't feel like it. It means Facebook tuning in when you don't feel like it. There's other things you can do. God knows that. But you've made a commitment. Uh, Pastor talked about it, and I'm really finished. Pastor talked about it the other week. Delight yourself in the Lord. How do we delight? We have to study His Word. We have to worship him. Yes. Worshiping God is giving God thanks for who he simply is. Praising God means we are grateful for what he has done. Yes. And then we need to pray to God. We need to talk to God. You wouldn't, yes. even, you wouldn't even date Boo if Boo didn't talk to you. <laughs> Am I right about it, lady? Right. If you don't call me, if you don't say stuff, if you don't talk to me, it don't work. Relationship doesn't work unless you are in communion. Hello, somebody. Right, right. Unless you are com in com communion. My cousin and his wife had to date long distance for a while, right? Y'all was on that phone with him. Hi, baby. FaceTime. Look at you, boo. Hey, good to see you. How you doing? Good morning, good morning. Why? Because we're working on a relationship. Yeah. We're trying to be together. God's trying to be with you. It don't work if you don't talk to him. Right, right. And if you wonder sometimes, where is God? He's like, where are you? He hasn't moved. He doesn't change. He's right here. He's begging. Jesus is calling. And we live in a day. I'm going to tell you something. Founding pastor, that was his motto for the church. We will stand for rain. Amen. If ever there was a time. Yes. That we need to do this. Yeah. Right. It is now. Yes. Everything doesn't go. And God is going to open up his wrath mm -hmm. on this old world. And you want to be saved. And I put this on Facebook and we finished. I put a post on Facebook that said the other day I was healed. And I left and I saw the rainbow. Yes. The rainbow doesn't make me think of pride. Mm -hmm. The rainbow makes me think of the promise. Oh, yeah. There's a covenant yeah. that God said he's coming back yeah. and he's going to destroy this world because of sin. Right. The old songwriter said, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready. And bear this in mind. God showed no one the rainbow sign. Not gonna be water. It's gonna be fire. Next time. We need to be telling people, get ready. Fire is coming. Huh? Violence in the street. Fire is coming. Huh? Sexual confusion. Fire is coming. Our political system. Fire is coming and it's closer church it's closer than we think get right with God and do it now Father in heaven thank you
Thank you. Thank you for these few minutes that we were able to look into your word. We pray, oh God, that your spirit has ministered to us to let us know that we are not under condemnation, but we are under conviction. We got to do better. Thank you, God. Thank you, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're in church today, Dorm Church is open. If you are not saved, if you have not been born again, we offer Christ to you. We offer him to you. Salvation is as simple as A, B, C, A. You must acknowledge that you are a sinner. B, you must believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, that he died on Calvary's cross, and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. And C, you must confess. That means simply take ownership you must confess it. They're not going to call you into court to testify if you don't know anything. If you are saved, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Open up your mouth and claim your, uh, claim your salvation. God gives it freely. Secondly, if you're in church, you're already saved, but you haven't been living like you should. You don't feel close. There's no condemnation resting on you. What you are feeling is the conviction of God. Come, repent, turn from your wicked ways. Tell God that you're sorry. What do you expect him to do? He's going to open his arms and receive you. Finally, if you're in church today and you're not a member of a local assembly, God wants you to join a church. God wants you to be connected with other believers. You can join Righteous Church. We are certainly not a perfect church, but we are a church pressing towards the mark. Find a church. There's a church that will fit you, your personality, your style. You want to do backflips? We got a church for you. Huh? You want to sit, never want to cry? We got a church for you. Bottom line, you need to be a believer, and you need to be with other people who believe like you. Lastly, if you're in church today, but you say, Reverend, you confuse me, and you have questions. Well, I'm going to invite you to come forward, and we'll explain to you. We can reason over the scriptures. Are you here today? I want to be saved. I want to be dedicated. I want to join the church, or I have questions. Are you here? Amen. So, Everybody going to heaven? Amen. Amen. Let us stand, church. We're going to receive our benediction. I'm sorry, we're going to pray first, but you can stand. Come on, Brother Brooks.